All right, the next section that we're going to take a look at in uh, our next bit that we're going to do in section three is called interactions and changes occur in, in, in ecosystems. Okay, so things don't always stay the same. There's things that cause changes to happen uh, to populations. Right? Their numbers could go up, numbers could go down, lots of different things. So in this one, we're going to talk about uh, bioinvasion and competition. First of all, bioinvasion, here's the definition. It's this right here. It is when a plant or animal, or any living thing really, is introduced to an area, an environment, that it's not native to. That means that's not where it's, it wasn't nat, it didn't naturally come from. Okay. Now the problem with that, you might think, well, oh, that's pretty decent, you know, increased diversity in certain areas, and that's great. But sometimes, well, this next line kind of says it right here, if these organisms are stronger than some of the other organisms that were already there, then they might do some damage to the ecosystems. And let me, let me show you some examples here. Let's go right here. In the textbook, we went over uh, a few examples. We went over a few examples, so I'm going to go over those with you a little bit here. So take a look at this bird. This bird here is called a starling. We've heard of starlings. We've got lots of starlings. See, these are these birds that, they're blackbirds. Lots of people call them blackbirds. They kind of, kind of have a metallic shine to them, their wings. But they are not native to North America. Actually, it says right here, in 1890, lots of these European star starlings were released into the New York's uh, Central Park. I'm not sure. Someone brought them over from Europe, thought they were kind of cool birds or whatever. And now um, they're doing awesome. So starlings have been very successful. And now there's only over 200 million. This was back, this is quite a while ago. There's probably over 300 million now in North America. Um, these birds, here's the problem. These birds compete with other birds such as bluebirds, woodpeckers, flycatchers for nesting sites. So what happens is that the starlings are out competing some of the other native birds for nesting sites, for food and for other resources and that could cause their populations to drop. Here's some uh, other examples. Uh, I'm not going to go over that one. Mussels. This is kind of interesting. Uh, it says these are zebra mussels, and they were first noticed in the Great Lakes in around 1988. Um, and they weren't brought over here on purpose necessarily. Uh, they were probably attached to a ship that came over from Europe. <laughs> it's always Europe, they're always causing problems. Um, but by 1994, there was tons of them in the rivers uh, near the Great Lakes. So they were introduced to an area where the conditions are really, really good for them, and then they breed and reproduce like crazy. That makes a problem for some of the other organisms that live in those waterways. Okay, so this is where uh, bioinvasion can cause some havoc, uh, wreak some havoc on other species. Okay, some other invasive species are uh, house sparrows, um, lots of different plant species, whoops, lots of different plant species in our area are also bioinvasive. Dandelions happens to be one of them. I believe Russian thistle is another one. Um, and they can outcompete. A question that I often ask the, the students is, what if, what if we introduced kangaroos to southern Alberta? Who would they compete with? They'd be competing with the deer. And who would win, right? Uh, kangaroos are a pretty strong, very strong herbivore. Who would win? It's a kind of a toss-up, right? Because we have our winters that the deer do fairly well in, but possibly the kangaroos could adapt. What could possibly happen to the kangaroos? That might hurt their population numbers, right? Okay, so that's bioinvasion. Let's look at uh, competition now. Competition is, this is what competition is. Again, it can happen between plants and animals and anything else uh, that's living. This is when organisms fight for resources. And in the, uh, out in nature, those resources are water, food, space. Uh, those are our main ones, right? And um, unlike humans, although some would disagree, <laughs> uh, animals in the animal world, they will fight for those resources to death, right? Because food, water, and space 
that means survival. So if they're not in a situation where there's not enough resources for everybody to go around, then competition will result. And that can affect uh, population sizes.